Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Midday Live on TV3 with me, Martin Isidu Dati. Coming up uh, this afternoon. Ministry of Information working on media enhancement programs for practicing journalists to promote higher standards. Emmanuel Navarre defeats Isaac Dogbe by technical knockout in round 12 to retain the WBO Junior Featherweight World title. And on the international front, United Nations Secretary General says well is not on track to limiting global temperatures, which is currently at 1.5%. Thank you very much for staying with us. Let's settle for the details of the stories now. And patients who visit the Denyami Health, um, Health Center in the Doma Central Municipality of the Bono region uh, for care can now heave a sigh of relief. This follows expansion of the health center by elders of the community. There are more than 1,500 residents at Denyami, in Sesraso, and four other adjoining communities. Although living in these farming communities is not easy, residents are fortunate to have a health facility to cater for their primary health care needs. But it is under-resourced and lacks space. Available space could not cater for all the four beds, so the corridor area was designated to contain the rest of the beds. For years, patients have been receiving health care in the open. The community then stepped in to provide a more spacious building. This was after health workers had called on them. The three-units community-initiated apartment has the capacity to accommodate 20 beds, with two rooms accommodating 10 beds each, while the remaining would serve as a medical laboratory. The Doma Central Municipal Assembly also contributed some bags of cement. Chief of Denyame is happy the community has impacted themselves. The municipal chief executive of Doma Central, Jisawatara, is equally elated. We've gone there to support them with bags of cement. And that's what I've been doing all over the community. When there is a self-help project, the assembly will go in quickly to support you in our own small way. So I commend the people of Danyame for putting up you know, that structure. Um, if they get the strength to start another one. We also go in to support them. A mental health nurse, Samuel Kofitechi, at the facility says medical consumables remain a challenge of the facility. Drugs get finished and we don't receive some from the medical, the regional medical stores early. So therefore, when clients come after diagnosing and treatment, you have to write the drugs for them to buy from the open market or outside. And that one gives a whole lot of challenge. Some of them may come with insurance and they will not have money to buy extra drug outside. And it also makes our work difficult because maybe a person, we will need the drug to attend to the person immediately, an emergency. But because we don't have the drug, the person will be going to town to buy. One problem of the Denyame community has been addressed by the responsibility lies with stakeholders to stalk it and enable caregivers to deliver on their mandates. The Doma Central Municipal Assembly has constructed and handed over a fully furnished six-unit classroom block with an office to the Yao Bofukrum community. This was after the construction, the structure accommodating pupils and teachers became weaker and was subsequently brought down by a rainstorm. Yao Bofukrum is one of four adjoining communities inhabited by some 1,000 people. The community is fortunate to have its children educated because there is a school. However, the structure accommodating both pupils and teachers deteriorated till it could no longer serve its purpose. A rainstorm also worsened the applied. Then the Doma Central Municipal Assembly intervened. It constructed, furnished and handed over a six-unit classroom facility after the community persistently drew their attention to the danger posed by the old structure. The building has an improved ventilation and electricity supply. The gated facility also has a place of convenience. 
The facility is already in use, but school was not in session at the time of the mission team's visit. Provisions were, however, not made for the kindergarten pupils. Because it happened to be an emergency situation, and we don't have facilities for you know KG1 and KG2, but we are looking forward to coming back here to probably do something for you know the little ones. In a related development, the assembly secured funds to roof the Kosani MA Primary School after being dislodged by a rainstorm last year. Municipal Chief Executive for Doma Central, Drisa Watara said, the assembly is keen on improving education. This is what we came to meet as an administration, uh, but we are bent on doing our level best to making sure that uh, we are able to build enough schools for our people. Um, some we have to go in to renovate, others to, we need to start from the scratch. Stakeholders in the educational sector would have to do more to improve infrastructure development in the municipality. Stanley Nibliu, TV3 News, Yaobofukrom. The Ministry of Information is working on media enhancement programs for practicing journalists to promote higher standards. The sector minister, Kujo Ponkroma, gave the hint at the media training and public sensitization on ECOWAS and migrants' rights and at an award ceremony in Accra. The normal phenomenon of migration is now a major challenge globally following its abuse. A high number of African youth are getting entangled in extremely difficult situations in irregular migration as hundreds of them die on the Sahara Desert and the Mediterranean in their attempt to reach Europe. Majority of them find themselves in such situations due to lack of information, misinformation and bad media reportage, among others. And you as well have a responsibility to tell the true story on both sides. The story about the risks and the unintended consequences that goes on there and also the story about the opportunities that we are creating for people to participate in and which will tone down that need. The Media Response, a non-governmental organization in collaboration with the International Office of Migration, ECOWAS Commission and other agencies have intervened. When we publish one-sided migration articles and inadequate migration data, we have overlooked the heart and the center of every migration-related story, which is people and migrants, human rights and migrant rights. The media response since 2017 has trained more than 100 journalists in investigative journalism on migration. The agency, with support from partners, has further developed a training manual as well as mobile application and database for migration stories. If you take a look at the training manual, there's a whole chapter or model that is dedicated to the practice of investigative journalism and the ethics that are associated with it. Though it focuses on migration, the rules and the lessons there apply to all other subjects. And it brings us into a space where we have to work to ensure that journalists can do their work in a safe environment. And all that we, all that we have to do to ensure that we provide for the protection of journalists, we do so. The launch of the manual and database coincided with the award of journalists who took part in the 2018 migration reporting competition. Information Minister Kujo Opong Nkrumah appealed to the donor community to support the novelty in order to improve the skills of many journalists on migration reporting. In other news, former Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Shippers Authority, Dr. Kofi Imbia, has called on government to go beyond the firefighting approach to dealing with spate of road accidents in the country. According to him, the negative statistics on road accidents can only go down if conscious efforts are made to check the cause. Fatalities on our roads continue to increase each year in spite of efforts to reduce them. Crash statistics in 2016 represent an increase of 15.6% in totality and 6.77% serious injuries over the 2015 figures. Between January and February this year, 
a total of 2,126 crashes involving 3,428 vehicles with 411 fatalities and 2,440 injuries were recorded. These figures excluded the deadly Kintampo and Central Region bus accidents and others in March and April. Immediate past chief executive of the Ghana Shippers Council, Dr. Kofimbia, wants efforts intensified to deal with their menace. Because it looks like time without number. We make all the noise when the accident happens. And we seem to forget just as we bury or send away the maimed to the hospital. But I think it is time for us to have a conscious and consistent effort that will be aimed at bringing down that negative statistics as far as road accidents are concerned. A gain of concern is the care for those maimed. Oftentimes, receiving health facilities appear to lack needed equipment to professionally handle injured persons. In a bid to overcome these, Anand Grace Foundation, a road safety concern NGO, has begun distributing wheelchairs to selected hospitals. The foundation will work with like-minded stakeholders to deepen the efforts towards identification of the causes, education, awareness, prevention, strengthening of legislation, monitoring and evaluation of efforts, targeting and support services. The first beneficiary is the police hospital here in Accra. I want to appeal to drivers and the various stakeholders that we should do everything we can to preserve lives from accidents. They are avoidable. Dr. Kofimbia urged the public, especially travelers, to play their rules to ensure drivers comply with safety measures on the roads. Now, authorities at Abutia Senior High School are appealing to government to speed up work on abandoned Get Fund projects in the school. Existing facilities authorities say cannot cater for the growing student population. Here's a report by Robert Abilba. Ebutia Senior High Technical School was established in 1991 as a community school. The school currently has a population of 876 students and staff strength of 99 made of teaching and non-teaching staff. School authorities lament the introduction of the free senior high school policy has led to congestion. The girls' dormitory, which is partially complete, is overcrowded. 30 students are compelled to share a dormitory meant for 15 students. There is not enough space for us inside. And some of the fans and the lights are not working. So there is sweat. If especially light out, the tap will not be flowing. We have to move to the borehole or town. And maybe we will be late for school. Work on the one-story boys' dormitory has also stalled. Due to infrastructural challenges, classes are held in an uncompleted three-unit classroom block. Work on a 12-unit classroom block has also stalled. Aside the headmaster and his assistant, who are accommodated on campus, all other teachers commute from Ho and other towns daily to teach. School lands have also been encroached on by some residents, a situation school authorities describe as worrying. The road network to the school is also not in a good shape. Meanwhile, an 11-member board of governors for the school has been sworn into office. And traditional authorities, Asafo Group and the Youth Development Association of the Abutia Traditional Area have resolved to take over management of the Kalakpa Game Reserve. The move, uh, they say, is to protect the game reserve from excessive poaching and illegal logging. The Kalapa Game Reserve was established in 1975 by government to protect various animals and tree species for economic and tourism purposes. The reserve is located in the southeastern part of the country, about 120 kilometers northeast of the capital Accra and about 30 kilometers south from the Volta Regional Capital Hall. 
Since the establishment of the over three kilometer square game reserve, communities whose lands were acquired for the project say they have not benefited much. They claimed government has failed to relocate persons who are located in the reserve areas. The creation of the reserve, the communities say, has rather deprived them of economic activities including farming, poaching and illegal felling of trees, the two communities say, have been going on an accused personnel of the Wildlife Division of the Forestry Commission of not doing anything to rectify the situation. Paramount Chief of Abutia Traditional Area, Togbi Abutia Kojokidi, has expressed concern about the development. Meanwhile, the Asafutu Dadaza has been relaunched to help mobilize the people to protect their natural resource. Uh, let's go to the Western Region now. The Western Regional uh, Office of the Administrator of Stool Lands has commenced full operations days after fire reached the entire office building. Board Chairman of the Western Region Lands Commission, Dr. Isaac Kofisego, revealed that all documents lost to the fire have been recovered. Board Chairman of Western Region Lands Commission, Dr. Isaac Kofisego, told the media that currently space has been created at the main building of the commission for offices of the administrator of two lands to work from. He revealed documents lost to the May 5 fire have been recovered. The document is lost. As you can see from this main building, all documents are safe. We, have a, we, are, we, we had a backup. So all the documents which have been burnt have all been restored. The Ghana Investments Fund for Electronic Communications has meanwhile presented 10 desktop computers, 10 UPS, 10 scanners and 3 network printers to the office of the administrator of Stool Lands. This will kickstart the process of making sure that the digitized programs that you have here will continue to work. And as we move forward, we'll come to visit you again, do proper assessment and have a full complementation of things that will make you work and deliver service to the good people of this country. Western Region Minister Kobi Ochri Dakumengsa reiterated government's intention of building a new office complex for the administrator of stool lands. Plans are far advanced also to take a decision to rebuild the, the stool lands building so that they can have enough space. Currently, the Lands Commission has given them some space to accommodate them to be able to do their work. But we believe that in the near future, the government will help them put up a new facility. Now, the Deputy Communications Minister, George Neye Anda, has lauded Star Times and the Chinese government for providing some Ghanaian communities with digital equipment to improve their livelihood. Speaking at an event to hand over documents of the project uh, to government, he charged leaders of various communities to ensure beneficiaries utilize the equipment for purposes intended. Star Times, a Chinese company, has provided digital equipment including satellite decoders, TV sets, among other communicating equipment to some deprived communities in the country. The move, dubbed access to satellites to 10,000 African villages, was to ensure people living in deprived communities have their share in the digital migration. The program will ensure locals receive training on operating digital equipment and also create jobs. At an event to hand over documents of a project to government, Deputy Minister for Communications George Anda lauded Star Times and the Chinese government for the bold step in improving digital migration in Ghana and Africa at large. The Chinese government indicated its willingness to implement the 10 major China-Africa cooperation plans within 50 African countries. The handing of a ceremony today indeed signifies the strengthening of ties between the Republic of Ghana and the People's Republic of China. He charged leaders of the various communities to ensure beneficiaries use the equipment effectively. I'd like to take this opportunity to call on all leaders of the beneficiary communities to ensure that the equipment installed in the public areas 
are placed under proper care. Chinese ambassador to Ghana, Shi Tingwan, noted the assistance will go a long way to ensure children get more educated by programs on the decoder. 10,000 African village project offers an opportunity for China and Ghana to deepen our relationship. It also accords us an invaluable opportunity in ensuring that the African content and the media development to the next level. On his part, Vice President of Star Times, Zhu Jin, believes the move will deepen the relationship between the two countries. The 21st century is an era of information, communication, and technology. People all over the world have the right to enjoy the convenience brought about by the high rate of development of information technology. Let's work hard together to eliminate the digital divide. At the opening ceremony of the Johannesburg Summit, of the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation in 2015, Chinese President Xi Jinping announced China's resolve to sponsor the project which will give access to satellite television to 10,000 villages in 50 African countries. Now, the Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection has admonished mothers of children with special needs to desist from abandoning them as they are potential future leaders. Cynthia Mamley Morrison was speaking at an event to feed mothers with disability and mothers of children with special needs ahead of Mother's Day. Ghana will, on Sunday, May 12th, joined the rest of the world to celebrate International Mother's Day in recognition and appreciation of the remarkable contributions mothers and mother figures have made to society. The Ministry for Gender, Children and Social Protection, as part of activities to mark this year's event, organized a feast in honor of mothers with disability and mothers of children with special needs. Mothers received food items and seed money as support to start any preferred business of their choice from the ministry and its partners, including Direct Aid, Ghana. The sector minister, Cynthia Morrison, spoke against the act of neglecting children with special needs by some mothers. I know it is frustrating having a child who is physically challenged, especially the one that looks so abnormal. The tendency is to kill the child or get rid of the child, dump her somewhere. But I will encourage that they are creatures of God. God knows why he brought them into the world. So if you have a child like that, it is because also we don't have a policy to support such mothers. And that is what I'm pushing and looking at, a situation where we can get money to support such parents. This year's celebration of Mother's Day is focused on celebrating motherhood, maternal bond, mothers with disability, and mothers with children with disability. And uh, Media General is organizing a special treat for selected mothers as we mark Mother's Day today. The event is taking place at the forecourt of TV3 here in Addis Ababa in Accra. And we want to use that opportunity to wish all mothers a very special Mother's Day today across the world. This is Midday Live on TV3. And on behalf of our team, we say happy Mother's Day to all of you. We'll be back shortly with more. Welcome back to Midday Live on TV3. Let's go to the Ashanti region. The Kenyatia Traders Association has expressed dissatisfaction over what they describe as the high cost of renting shops and stalls at the redeveloped Kenyatia market in Kumasi. According to the group, traders would have to pay between 7,300 and 48,000 CDs to rent space at the market for a five-year period. Traders who cannot afford outright payments have the option of assessing a pre-finance agreement with Fidelity Bank at a 20% interest. The chairman of the Validation and Verification Committee, Nana Ajenim Boatin, says the initial valuation took into consideration the financial status of the traders. The government intervention for the five years with the bank is a minimum 
payment, daily payment of five cities, 67 pesos to 40 cities. So what it means is that the bank is taking charge of the 39,900 plus the principal plus interest and you're only paying 40 cities a day. The KJTR Traders Association is, however, disappointed with the valuation and wants a review. Metropolitan Chief Executive or say SCB entry assured the traders their interests will be saved. Initially, some of them were in doubt as to what was going to happen. But we've been so transparent, we've walked them through the process and we've, we've told them where we are now. We've given them the rental values. We've also taken them through what we, we need to do. And the Ghana Export Promotion Authority, GEPA, has brought together stakeholders to finalize the drafting of a national export development strategy proposed earlier this year. Both chairman of the authority said the draft will draw on digital innovation and value addition to meet the authority's 26.5 billion CD target. The new National Export Development Strategy is a proposal meant to enhance Ghana's effective participation in multilateral trading. It is also to enable the country to take maximum advantage of market opportunities in the short, medium and long terms. The document follows the expiry of the existing National Export Strategy, NES, which was formulated and launched in 2012 but failed to deliver. As the authority marks its 50th anniversary, Board Chairman Sandy Oseyajima noted, the strategy will be a guideline in achieving the 26.5 billion CD target for non-traditional exports, NTEs, by 2021, set by the authority. So it will be ideal to finish this uh, strategic plan, see areas of, uh, that we need to concentrate, but most importantly, implement the recommendations. What happens in the past is that we do it. I'm not interested in feel-good kind of meetings. If we come up with a strategy, let's find the resources to push it. You have to spend money to make money. So if we want to change export in Ghana, we have to fund it. Cashew is a big one. Cocoa, you know, the value addition that we add to cocoa will also help. Um, coconut, we haven't even scratched the surface yet. The chief executive officer of GEPA, Ifwa Sabi Asari, said the collaboration with other stakeholders is essential in ensuring cohesion and involvement of all sectors. The previous one didn't even have that implementation plan that can be used to implement that um, um, strategy, so it wasn't used. That is why you see about um, 100 people here today representing almost 95 um, percent of the stakeholders that are involved in the e e export ecosystem in Ghana. The Ghana Export Promotion Authority was established to develop and promote Ghana's exports after the realization that traditional exports alone would not sustain the economy. It acquired its authority status in 2011 in accordance with Ghana's Revised Laws Act 1998. And Deputy Trade Minister Robert Ahum Kalinse says Ghana will go ahead with the implementation of the Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. He was responding to a warning by the IMF to Ghana not to sign the agreement this year. So far, 22 countries, including Ghana, have ratified the agreement. The Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement between participating African countries has received the minimum number of ratification needed to come into effect. Its promotion of tariff-free movement of goods, people and services across the continent is also expected to favor SMEs who account for 80% of Africa's employment and 50% of its GDP, according to the World Bank. The International Monetary Fund warned Ghana could face revenue shortfall if the country starts the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement this year. The IMF maintains that although the agreement will boost trade on the continent, it will affect earnings and employment opportunities in some sectors of the economy. Deputy Trade and Industry Minister Robert Ahum Kalinse says the concerns raised by the IMF will be addressed in the final agreement. When I hear statements like it's not ready, we should do X, Y, and Z. I understand where people are saying that from, but the reality is this. The journey of us selling and exporting amongst ourselves within Africa is not a question. It is something we must do. 
How to get there is something we can debate, but the destination is not debatable. So the point then becomes, it's not a question if it's Ghana going to delay. Ghana wants to put all the actions in place, take advantage of it. But we understand that as in every journey, you will face challenges. And Ghana will face each one of those challenges and deal with them. AU Commissioner on Trade, Albert Mochenga, indicated the benefits of the agreement far outweigh the concerns raised by the IMF. We require 22 ratifications for the agreement to enter into force. And this should be 30 days after receiving the 22nd instrument of ratification. It is against this background that we are planning to launch the operational phase of the African continent of free trade area in July this year in Niamey, Niger. To facilitate the launch, work is advancing very well on supporting instruments. And these supporting instruments are on rules of origin, schedules of concessions on, tariff, on, uh, of tariff, on tariffs on trade in goods, online non-tariff barriers monitoring and elimination mechanism, a digital payments and settlement platform, and the African Trade Observatory portal. Trade and finance ministers of the various countries that have signed and ratified the agreement will meet in June to consider other areas of concern before the final agreement is presented to the heads of state at the next AU meeting. Nigeria, Eritrea and Benin are yet to sign onto the agreement. This is still Midday Live on TV3. We'll be back with the latest in the world of sports, including that all-important bout that Isaac Dobre seemed to have lost. We'll be back soon. Now, as part of activities lined up to mark this year's uh, Mother's Day celebration, Media General uh, will today, May 12, celebrate mothers with unique uh, stories in a grand style. Uh, evergreen duo, that is a gospel duo, Tego Sisters, as well as other acts have been billed to add up to the excitement expected to happen today. And on your screens right now are live images from the forecourt of TV3 where some mothers are expected to be honored and awarded. And by extension, we want to express a, a heartfelt appreciation to efforts by all mothers around the country and globally uh, for that matter. And then also all potential mothers uh, that are all expecting a happy Mother's Day to you. So uh, we are expecting the program to get underway in the next few minutes. And um, if you are part of the special invite, we encourage you to get here on time. So we uh, help the rest or join the rest of the mothers to have a great time today as we mark World Mother's Day. And I want to use this opportunity to say a special happy Mother's Day to my mother, Fidelia Kofi in the Volta region. She's watching me right now. I love you very much, mom. And uh, by extension, all women who have played a critical role in shaping my life as it is today. So those are images, uh, pictures from uh, the premises of TV3, the Four Court, and um, mothers are coming in. Uh, it's special invite mothers are coming in to be celebrated and honored and awarded for their contribution to developing individuals and the nation as a whole. So if you have been invited, we are waiting for you. Do make your way here. Let's all have a great time. And so that will be it for the bulletin. It came your way from our studio here at Adesawe in Accra. My name is Martin Esiedu Date. Thank you very much for watching. There is more news on our website as 3news.com. Do visit and get updated. Once again, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers watching. Good afternoon.